All right, guys. I thought I'd uh, do a quick update on this project. This is the uh, AquaPrint 70 touch screen. Put that here. So my Raspberry Pi is in three is in here. And I also got. Uh, I went back sh back to Micro Center and got the uh, the, uh, the the official like case type thing. Take a look at that real quick. So it's actually, uh, instead of actually putting out a case, I really actually like the way this case looked, you know. You know, injection molded, so. Only uh, 12, 12, 13 bucks for that, so that's not bad. Alright, so. Where is the, this Raspberry Pi came with some stuff here? Let's see here. I gotta take my Raspberry Pi 3 out of my 2020 mount case. So I'm actually gonna put it on here. So you see that. Okay, so I'm gonna take the pins that came with it. Wow, that's a tight rope band there. Snap that off there. Ooh. So I mean, it's gonna hook up a uh, five volt positive and negative on the GPIO pins. Take that off there, man. Okay, so positive and negative. Five volt. That's your, that's your five volt right there. That's your negative. And, and the 5 volt is on pin 1 and negative is on your pin 3. This allows me to actually power it. Um, I don't have to have both the USB, like there's two USBs in the front. I can see USBs. So I don't have to actually, I can only have, I only need to have one powered in. I don't need to have them both powered in. That's what that does. It's a 5 volt jumper wire, which powers either or device. Alright, some screws. Actually, before I do that, I forgot to get this thing in there. I'll be back with the thing going for that. So here's the ribbon cable. I don't know if this is a. Uh, there we go. There's a little clocking clip on there you have to take off. Get that in there. It's hard to get in there. Lock the side clips in. And then that should be even out this end. Couple screws. I already have Raspberry, uh, or I mean, excuse me, uh, Octoprint on this device already. So I might need to install drivers. I don't know yet until I fire it up. Drivers on the uh, the Linux-based OS to to uh, support the, the touchscreen, but we'll find out pretty fast. Okay. Okay, with that, it's kind of okay. All right, so I actually had the cable on backwards, so it helps when you have your glasses on. All right, so let's see. So let me get my uh, two point one amp charging cable, and I'll be back. So we'll fire this up. That really should be it. I already have it statically programmed for the wireless, so once this thing comes online. I'm going to hook up a keyboard to it. Um, I don't think it's going to automatically go into the graphical display, X. It's just going to go into a Linux console. So I need to start X. So we'll get that here. Get the keyboard connected to it. Yeah, I, I highly doubt this is going to boot right into uh, uh, X or the graphical display. Here. I get my power adapter on the back. Alright guys, we need to find a charger that at least does 2 amps. 
So most phone chargers won't do actually uh, two amps. Uh, this is actually off a tablet. So this one does two amps. I have no idea what's going to happen here, so let's see. I'm going to plug it into the USB, into the LCD side. Also, you, it's really critical too is to get, get a USB cable that can actually handle uh, charging at 2.1 amps or higher. There we go. Huh, opposite. Cool. Um, just curious. Login, cool. Okay, well, at least I know that I know that it works. So what I'm gonna do is put this in the case, so that way I'm not jacking the wires up here. So this is the official. Um, Compatible with, I guess it's the. I, don't know if it's, I think it's the official one. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, what's hanging up on this thing? I guess I have to find a way to get those connectors down in there. So they have to be kind of see they see they're like that. I have to get the in push in and up. That's in the okay. These have to be in place. So I it's a little trying to get this in there. Well, wow, it's gonna be difficult. All right. Well, it's just a matter of getting everything lined up and in place. Alright, so the hardest part was getting all these things aligned to go in, to, to snap in there. Now that's done. Put the whole retaining screws in here. I just want to make sure there's a binder not in there. Get this LCD cable. Shouldn't be pinched in any way. That's a front look. Let's see what it wants to be. Let's see. That's always terrifying. Okay. Make sure the screen isn't cracked. <laughs> that wasn't like a crack, you know. Um, okay, put the cover on here for now. Doesn't go all the way down. It's, it's, it's like a vent. All right now, I feel more secure. They, you know, throwing this thing around a little bit. So it looks like it was. I'm sure I can change that, but the uh, direction. So I'm going to plug this in again. And actually, I'm plugging my keyboard again. That was weird with the keyboard, though, you know? Hopefully my keyboard works this time. We'll see. I might have to go jump over to like a wireless keyboard. Okay. 
Low voltage detected. What's up with that? That is a 2 amp power supply, so I don't know what the deal would be. Give you the cable. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this keyboard, man. Try, uh... Oh, <laughs> my control button is stuck. Yeah, I should have recognized that with the character. Alright. Pi Raspberry. Okay. Let's see. Uh, I'm just curious. This is how you normally start the graphical interface on Linux. Start X. Alright, so I'm guessing I'm going to have to install the graphical interface. Alright. Um. Oh, that's interesting. Look at that. It actually says, it says this uh, image of OctoPrint doesn't come with the graphical interface, but to do it, type in the above, sudo slash home. So there actually is an install, install script. So you're seeing what I'm seeing. I'm learning as you're learning. Scripts dash desktop. So I already have internet connection on this thing already. So via wireless pod, okay, Raspberry. All right, so it's going to download the packages and uh, we'll be back. All right, so it looks like it's done. Let's zoom in here. All right, we'll do a pseudo reboot. What's up. So I don't know if this is going to go straight into X or the graphical environment or at the start X. Let's see. Huh. That's cool. So I don't, like I said, I still don't know if it's going to go straight into the graphical environment here. That's the power warning. Okay, hi. I've never actually used Raspberry Pi with a graphical interface, so I don't really know. That's cool. Okay. Alright, so probably easier with a mouse, but now you need to go into the uh, Octoprint and uh, I have a computer right above here. Look at my Fi 3D on there. Um, and I'll log in. Alright, so now you need to go into the uh, touch uh, right here. Plugin Manager and install the interface. Hi right, guys, there it is. Check it, take a look. So I actually didn't. I installed like an auto login script to have this thing auto login as soon as you boot up uh, Octoprint. It does take a while to boot up, so I don't know if I'm happy about that. But um, there we go. And the printer's on. So let's take a look at the camera. I want to see the camera. Oh, it works. Awesome. So I actually have a uh, now I can actually adjust my focus ring bring this over a little bit so I can see it. I can mess with the focus a little bit. So I do actually have a C270 and I'm gonna come over here and I'll mess with the focus a little bit. I'm gonna turn the focus ring, the custom printed out focus ring they had. Let's see if I can get that BL touch to come in. There we go, look at that. I don't know if you can see that. It's a bit, uh, take a look at that if you can see that. See how I can bring in the BL touch, so that's cool, the focus ring. Awesome. Yeah, way better. That's a cool feature. And let's see if I can, uh, there we go. Take a look. 
I'm touching that. Okay. Um, let's do the Z. That works. What about, okay, what about, I have a BL touch somewhere in here. There we go. Okay, probe down. I hit the probe down. Probe is down. Probe up. That works. Okay, this is cool. Um, let's see, stop, slice, we tail viewer. I guess from here you can change the settings and stuff. Okay. Well, I mean, this is totally unnecessary. <laughs> you don't have to have this. I mean, dude, it's just kind of cool to have, you know? Like, I'm still not 100% sure if I like it or not, but just because it takes so long to boot up, you know? It takes about a minute to boot up. Well, I think it's definitely better than the, uh, the TFT32, but sometimes I don't, I don't always print from Octoprint. Sometimes I, I, I prefer to have a direct USB and print from a Simplify 3D. Okay. Pretty cool, man. You know, I mean, probably like, I mean, about a hundred bucks if you want this, you know. You know, Raspberry Pi 3 and, um, this would be my couple of prints I probably already have in here already. Too bad you can't play right back from the panel. That'd be cool. Or maybe you can. Let's see. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, I doubt it. I probably don't have an MPEG player back installed. So now i got to figure out how to get back into the touch UI. Right. Yeah, this this actually part is where it takes a while to load. But... Okay, well, that's going to load up again. And pretty cool. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm still learning it. So, I mean, hopefully that'll be uh, some cool stuff. But uh, upcoming videos, I think i got to get this um, SCAR 1.3 board in. And some other stuff I gotta do here. Lots and lots of projects going on here. Alright, cool.